Hello, my name is Renata von Scharner. Welcome to the Charles River Conservancy Parkland Show. We have a special treat for today. It's not trick or treat, but it's a real treat. And today we have with us here on the show, Carl Hagland. Thank you, Carl, for coming today. Thank you. Um, many of you uh, have probably seen the work of Carl, even if you haven't seen him in person. Carl has been working some 20 years on the Charles River. Yeah. Some 20 years. Carl Hagland um, is the senior planner at the DCR, what used to be the MDC, and he is working on the area called the New Basin, which is below the Museum of Science. And um, we're going to travel um, to, to that area today, and I will we'll show you pictures. And in particular, we'll be talking about the new North Bank Bridge, a very exciting new bridge. Um, and Carl, maybe a bit later in the program, you can tell us of how your um, studies in landscape architecture, architecture um, have flown into your work. Um, we always start um, with this picture, uh, which shows the Charles River um, from the harbor up to the Watertown Dam. And we are going to the very extreme right side of this picture um, to the new basin um, further down river than the, um, the Museum of Science. Um, and um, Carl, I will show you show now um, the picture of the book that you have written, um, Inventing the Charles River. That's a book that was published by MIT Press, co-published by the Charles River Conservancy. Um, Carl, give us a bit of an idea of how this book came about. I was actually looking for a an essay that I was required to write in, in graduate school. And because we had lived near the river and had enjoyed the river since we'd come to Massachusetts uh, as newlyweds, I thought it would be enjoyable to read about the history of the river and write a paper and then go on to the next subject. <laughs> and instead, I found that no one really had written a book of the history of the Charles River, that no, people had written about Cambridge and people had written about Boston, but no one had tried to put those two stories together. Mm -hmm. And so I spent uh, a number of years <laughs> going through the sources and I did, what I discovered was that the people who understood the river at the end of the 19th century understood that it could be a great public space. Mm -hmm and they saw it as one space. They didn't see it as half in Boston and half in Cambridge. They saw it as a great public space and they set to work even though the river was lined with industry, it was terribly polluted. Uh, they began acquiring the land uh, in the 1890s as part of the newly formed Metropolitan mm. Park Commission. Mm. Well, it's clear we could easily <laughs> fill a, a program with you talking about the book, but it's clear as they say, it took in your sleeve and your arm and your body, and yeah. it became, in a way, your life's work. And it's a wonderful book. I highly recommend that you get um, this book, um, Inventing the Charles River. Um, the title alone tells that you know there's a lot of vision in there. Um, but we are going to look um, at uh, a particular bridge, um, it, which is called the North Bank Bridge. And, but like um, every story, there is a history to it. And Carl, um, tell us uh, what we're looking at and where we will find the new North Bank Bridge in this picture. This view of Cambridge and Boston in 1894 shows uh, the river just behind North Station. Those tall buildings in the lower left of the picture are the multiple train stations that the Boston and Lowell and the Eastern Railroad and the, uh, later the Boston and Maine built to come into the city of Boston from the north. Uh, the Charles River was really cut off from the harbor by this expanse of uh, railroad trestles. Uh, each company built its own station. They built 
their own trestles, and over time they filled what had once been a very large body of water called the Charles River Bay. And that whole area of North Point that we know as North Point today uh, was once all open water. Mm -hmm. I recall there were some 20 railroad lines crossing at some stage. So. Yes, and, and, and there was some important industrial history there. The first uh, counterweighted drawbridges uh, used by railroads in America were built at North Station. Uh, and, and there are two of them still remaining that are about to be reconstructed mm. over the next couple of years. Well, let's move on in history a little bit. We're we jumping here to 1848. Um, so we are looking towards downtown Boston and um, we see the Museum of Science which is not there yet. It's just an open park. We see the little pavilion which remained and we see the Green Line viaduct and then we see the North Point area um, which at this stage was, was, there was nothing happening there. Just upstream of the Green Line Viaduct is the char first Charles River Dam. The dam was actually an earthen structure. Uh, it was conceived originally to keep out the tides and to cover the polluted mudflats of the lower Charles River. But Guy Lowell had one of the early visions of making this area a park when he said if the dam were as wide as the locks, then it could be a public park space that would connect Frederick Law Olmsted's Charles Bank Park that the city of Boston had built with the Cambridge Front, which Cambridge had envisioned as a park but had not yet constructed. Mm -hmm. Well, let's move on into history. We are now 10 years later in 1858, and here is the first Museum of Science already standing there and some buildings are in North Point Park um, have already been built there. The, the great change w that took place in only 10 years, remember that that area that was North Point, what, what we know as North Point today, in 1948 was empty. The Boston and Maine had built a seawall and had filled the land but hadn't done anything with it and now we see 10 years later they have filled it as, with rail yards and warehouses and the Science Museum is expanding uh, the interest in the park on the dam had disappeared maybe as a result of the fact that so many of us moved to the suburbs in the 1950s and it seemed completely appropriate for the Science Museum to expand on what had originally been public park space. In the meantime the railroad envisions a great freight operation we see on the Cambridge side uh, uh, boxcars lined up. Over in Charlestown we see a long, long row of potato warehouses that were built uh, to unload freight coming in from Maine. Mm -hmm. And those, so even though the number of railroad bridges has gone down in this photograph, we see the railroad with this vision of expanding its uh, operations. Mm. Now, this model um, now we are looking from the Boston side over to Cambridge and Charlestown. Give us this is a, a model of some envisioned landscape, I imagine, and cityscape. The the important thing about this this model, m much of it along the river's edge did not get built, but what we see just upstream in the lower left is the North Washington Street Bridge. And just upstream is the new Charles River Dam, which was approved and constructed, opened in 1978, uh, just as the great blizzard of 78 came along. Uh, this was a construction by the Army Corps of Engineers, which has the responsibility for navigable waters in the United States. And we see this new dam that replaced the function of the old dam in addition to having three locks for boat passage, this dam had six uh, 2,700 horsepower diesel motors that were powerful enough 
to keep the blizzard of 78 from flooding the Back Bay and Cambridge, and it had just been completed at the time of that blizzard. Great, great timing. Um, now, um, let's move on to kind of also what has become your area of work, um, which is the, the new basin. Um, we are looking again, sitting above Cambridge, looking to Boston, and um, I guess somebody used the green color to, to show of how the path along the Charles uh, could actually be a continuous band and go to Charlestown and, uh, and the Harbor Walk. This photograph from 1980 was actually uh, doctored, uh, modified by drawing those green lines as a way of communicating what would might be possible with the construction of the central artery. The central artery planned to take down that existing bridge crossing the river just upstream of the dam. It was a double-decked steel structure, not very handsome. And as because the dam had been built, the Metropolitan District Commission was authorized to acquire land in this area with the hope of extending the esplanades in Boston and Cambridge all the way to Charlestown on the north side and to the north end on the south side. And this simple diagram was the idea that we would create pathways uh, along both sides of the river from Charlestown and the north end up to the esplanades. Mm -hmm. I guess the reason so many people don't know this area because it's very hard to get to. It's, it's, you really have to know that you can get there from just across from the parking garage of the Museum of Science. But all that is going to change. Um, um, Carl, here's another historic picture, I think still. Um, this, is a, this is when they took down the bridge over the Tower A. But we already have the new I-93, is that correct? What you see is in on the right hand side of this photograph are those 1930 railroad drawbridges and behind them are the temporary ramps under construction for the central artery. Th those ramps were built to connect the city square tunnel with the Zakem, what would become the Zakem Bridge. So we see the new highway construction in the back and temporary ramps being built, getting ready for another set of permanent loop ramps to be built in Cambridge. Mm -hmm. And I have a picture here now with the Zaken Bridge uh, built. Um, I think I shot that myself out of, a, of an airplane and I remember shaking and being so excited at this vista. And I think what this picture shows is that kind of like the two bookends, the Zaken Bridge with the two pylons and then the arches of the green elevated, um, of, the, of the green line, the elevated bridge. And you can really see the, the great potential of this area and um, of how that came about. There's open land in this picture that looks like it could easily be turned into the front yard for these new developments that are going up in Cambridge and Boston and Charlestown. What looks difficult from this, as we look down on this area from the airplane, we see all the things that crisscross the site and make it look extraordinarily difficult to get from one side of the river to the other and to walk along the river's edge. We see these enormous highway loop ramps. The 10 tracks coming out of North Station that cross on four sets of tracks over the Charles River. So the question is, how do we get pedestrians through this maze of, of roadway and railroad tracks? Mm -hmm. Another vista um, of about the, sa the same, it was at the same shoot here, um, we see again these two bridges that um, frame that area. Um, if we could stay on here for just a minute, the other thing that you see in the lower left-hand corner is two tall towers. 